Hello YouTubers, it's me. Thanks for joining me today and I hope you enjoy the video that you're about to see. What I'm going to be doing is a little bit of uh, landscaping come scenic work on the layout today. I found a little idea that I can do uh, with the short space that I have. As often in the hobby you find things to do, uh, new things to do on the layout. Sometimes you want to change things and alter things around. Well this is what I'm going to be doing today and hopefully it will show you the process of how to do it something very simple and easy and how you can achieve a half decent effect anyway on to the actual job so if I come over here with the camera I'll just bring it round I'll take it off the tripod so just bear with me All right, we're going to go helicopter mode for a little bit so don't get seasick right this little bit of backing board I've screwed to the edge of the baseboard on my side of the layout, the front part of the layout if you like. I've just screwed it in place with some screws. And this is the sort of backing board you get with sort of packing in furniture. The other day I got some furniture and this lovely bit of backing board and several bits of it came with the, the furniture. So it's just packing material they put in the boxes these days but it's fantastic for using on the layout. And what I've done here is just drilled and screwed some screws on there very simply one two one more down the end holds it in place quite nicely and as you can see it goes all the way along down to the end of the road bridges and what we're going to be doing I've got some plaster material some uh, landform bandage from Woodland Scenic left over from many years ago it's still in very good condition and I'm going to basically build up a slight embankment um, between the top here to the floor level. We're going to go all the way along with it and then once it's dry we're going to put some PVA on there and address it with some scenic material and that will give a little bit more relief and plus it will give a little bit of protection the side of the layout, this side as well from getting knocked and rubbed against when I sit on my chair which is there. Okay so that's what we're going to be doing and I'll stop this video a minute, set the camera up at the right angle and you can just watch how I do it. Okay everyone, welcome back and let's get started with some construction with the hill hillside I'm going to do here today. So the first thing we're going to do obviously is clear the area which we've done before and there was a little piece of wheels, cobblestone sheeting that came down from the edge of this pathway on the mill. That's gone because we obviously want to keep the natural contour of the road. If you watch my finger go along the grass uh, line of the road, it actually goes around like that and then obviously this way. The purpose I'm talking about is actual width, the actual width of the road. If you can look with your eye um, from left to right, the actual width of the pathway, you can determine um, the actual shape of the road and how vehicles are going to come down that road and, and actually follow it round uh, driving wise. What we don't want is any obstructions where the lorry is going to come to an obstruction in the road and have to climb over the hill to get round it. That's a little bit silly and unprototypical. So what we've done now is remove that piece of cobblestone sheeting and just for argument's sake a lorry has got a much smoother path to come down that road now straight up to the gate. Also, whilst we've got our little friend in place there, if we take our section of plaster cloth which I've already pre-cut, if we lay it on dry like that, that's where I want it, I can see already how it's going to sit roughly so what I'm going to do is leave it on there dry without no water at the moment so it's completely dry and that way we can maneuver this vehicle imaginary round it and to set it at an angle for example to see how it would negotiate that road with the hill in place so that works perfectly well I'm quite happy with that and I can see the natural line of the road with the grass marking boundary there how that would sit so I'm quite happy with that so let's move our vehicle out of the way keep it safe and let's begin so we've got our first section there like I said it's dry but what I'm going to do with the aid of some water and a dry paintbrush I'm going to start by soaking the hang on I'll get this on the camera so you can see what I'm doing I'm sure we find it's a bit boring but what I'm going to do is just basically as you can see that's filled up with water just going to soak the brush in the water like that so it's nice and wet and then I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to tack the back of this 
on there. Put some water. If you get access water on the baseboard, don't worry about it, it will dry off. You can always get a cloth afterwards and just dab it off. And I've done, that's it, just come in. Yeah. And always just, as you're all I'm doing there, as you can see, is just dabbing that on there like that with the paintbrush. And what happens is that water actually will be absorbed by the plaster cloth, so don't worry about it too much. Just tack it on there like that. Dab it on with a paintbrush, and you can lick that bit around like that. You see, that you can just bring around and just smooth it off with the brush at the same time. You see how that works? Follow it around with the brush like that. You just basically paint it on like that, and the brush will pick up the water and move it to wherever you want on that plaster cloth, and it makes a nice smooth transition as you can see do that bit in there like that run it over the top that's it so what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to take the brush load it up with a little bit of water not over excessive and just gently come over the top of that like that very gently And whilst it's dry, you can actually just play with it. And what I'll do, I'll leave that for a little bit, and then we'll come on and do the rest of it. So I'm just going to pause this video while you go and have a cup of tea, or whatever you need to do, and I'll see you back in a moment. Right, welcome back. As you can see what I've done, I've got some more layers formed along there. I know I said I wouldn't, but for the purpose of teaching in this video, I'm going to actually use some scrambled up bits of uh, paper. Um, I've got some old bits of paper there. And what I've done, simply, you can see, I've just literally rolled it and twisted it like that. Make a little sausage shape out of the paper. So you've got sort of something like that. And then I'm going to put it in right over there. And what I'm going to do is actually dunk it in some water, very slightly, not a lot, just a little bit. And the idea is that the landform bandage will grab the water on the paper and adhere to it. So what I'm going to do is put my bit of paper, dry-ish, in place like that. As you can see, it's over there. Next I'm going to come in with my landform bandage. And there's a different method this time, which I'll show you. And that will be, if I can bring the camera over, I'm not sure if I can do this. I'll try my best, but I'll show you what I'm doing so it makes sense rather than you seeing it off camera, because it, otherwise it won't make sense. If I take my little bucket there, you just dunk it in like that. Give it a good old swish in there, not too much. Lift it out carefully, as you can see, like that. That's now soaked in water. Give it a little shake. Get the excess water off it. And then, by using one hand craftily, putting the camera back in position, fantastic. I'll bring this over. This is soaking wet with water. You can now lay this directly onto the piece of paper that I screwed up and actually you can drape it to wherever you want it like that, I'm going to press mine down like that in the position at the same time moulding the shape of the hill you want with the landform bandage and the bit of paper underneath squishing it all together at the same movement and you can get a nice effect use your fingers as well, you don't have to use a paintbrush as I did before you can use the old fingers, they actually do work better and it's more fun actually <laughs> 
get nice and messy. That's what the hobby's about, eh? And just smooth it in with with your fingers like that. Very quick process. Um, just really do it by feel and by eye. I think when you use the method of using your hands and also your eyes at the same time, you can see and sculpt whatever position you want to put the heels in. Something like that. So you can even just bring it down a little bit if you want to. While it's still wet, it's quite pliable. This stuff does work when it's still wet very well. But in about say 10-15 minutes, this will all start to harden. And what you do, once it goes off, you can lay another layer over the top. See this side here, at the beginning, this has already gone hard, slightly hard. Um, but what I find is you need about two or three layers of this stuff put over each layer as it dries so once you get the first bit on let it dry then put your second lot of bandage on over the top let that dry and repeat the process for the third step which is three layers of bandage I use about three layers it purely makes it nice and sturdy and you get a nice base afterwards in which to work with your sealant material and your glue or paint or whatever as you can see my embankment stroke little hill isn't 100% um, flush all the way along I've done that deliberately because if you look at real life embankments and hills they're never straight as a die all the way along, there's lumps and bumps and contours and all sorts of things um, it adds interest as well and it adds three dimensional texture if you don't believe me go out where you live get in the car or take a walk and walk along a roadside hill or embankment if you can find one and you notice it's never dead straight. It goes straight in some places, then it gets a little bumpy here and there, then it goes up and it goes down. Um, especially little country roads. So this is meant to be like a little grass verge. Nothing too spectacularly sort of Mount Everest sort of scale, but in terms of 00 scale, if you look at the size of the telephone box, that gives you an idea of roughly the height of a 00 scale person, roughly to about there. And so he could physically walk up there, couldn't he? To about there. He could easily do that. Anyway, that's how I do things anyway, in that in that thought process. And if you want to know where I get my inspiration from, it's just simply going outside and looking at the real world. And also travelling by train helps a lot. Like I said the other day on one of my videos, if you sit on a train and look out the window, either left or right side, and just look at the scenery and make note of what you see, either mentally or write it down or video camera it or phone video it these days. Make a note or record something about what you see. Notice how things change in contour and texture, what colours the trees have on their leaves and bits and pieces like that. That's how you get ideas for the railway at home. And I think it's much more fun to do that. Because these day and age, I mean, to be honest with you, I like the products they have in terms of stuff like this landform bandage but it's more fun to create your own textures and own colours using real life examples, that's the whole idea. Right, so that's drying off lovely now, so what I'll do, I'll move on down there and we'll do some more. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do for this bit, I'm not going to use any newspaper, I'm just simply going to lay that on wet. And I'm going to not use any newspaper for this bit, so it'll be quite straight. I don't want my heels to be bumpy all the way along, like I said. I like the idea of having little contours here and there. So we'll start by using the straight edge first of the bandage, which I'll bring in and show you. I'll try and seat it so it's the straight edge where you cut it off from, which lays the best, I think. He says. <laughs> Right, let's get the top bit on, that's it. Once you get it on, you can uh, mould it and put it how you want. I'm going to pull my forward just a little bit, like that. And then, like that. Okay, 
as you can see, it's quite simple. It's not rocket science. The only scientific part of this is where the water reacts with the plaster material. That's the only science bit involved. Other than that, it's quite easy. Again, I can't stress out there, ladies and gents, how flexible this material is. You, you really can play with it as much as you want before you're finally happy with where you want it to go. Obviously, don't leave it too long, but um, it is quite playable. And once it's dry, you can also cut it with a sharp knife. If you want to do any trimming or you know alterations, it works just the same way. So there we go. As you can see down the end, I've started to build it up, and I'm going to carry on to the road bridge, which is about another section or so. I need to cut some more material. It's all exciting stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I tell you, Rivet at home, you're thinking, well, this guy's got such a riveting commentary. It's really good. If my arm's blocking the shot, I do apologise. There you go, that's that all the way along now. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to let this whole thing dry for about 25 minutes to a half an hour or so until it's nice and reasonably dry. And then I'll come over and put the next layer on top and repeat the process. So what I'll do, I'll just pause this for a minute until I've got some more layers on there. And then we can progress further. Alright, so while I'll do that, you can go and do something interesting and I'll see you soon. Don't go away. Right, okay guys and girls, as you can see, I come down with the camera and you can see I've got about three layers of this landform bandage applied onto the structure, which is exactly what I wanted. This is the finish you want to aim for, so you can't see any white perforated holes that come through the landform bandage when it's out of the packet. What you want to do is a nice, smooth, white plaster finish. Like I said, much like when you go to the hospital and have your limb put on plaster, this is the sort of finish you want to aim for. So I recommend personally about three layers of the stuff. Three layers is lovely because it forms a nice hard shell in which you can work with in terms of putting your glue on there, scenic grass, static grass, you name it. It will hold up perfectly well. So that's now drying. So whilst that's drying, I'm going to go and make a cup of tea and I'm going to tidy up later on. Um, on your baseboard surface, if you've done like what I've done, you've got a road surface or a the scenic surface put in. Don't worry about the plaster marks, that will all brush off dry with water and you can easily get it off with a wet cloth or even repaint it over. It's, it's only plaster so I mean look it comes off. If I use my paintbrush here for example, look, see, it easily comes off. So if I've got for example one of those baby wet wipes or damp cloth, that will come off no problem. And this road surface is voluntarily painted on there so you won't damage it. Um, what I will say is, when it's you put it on there when it's wet and it starts to form your layer you could actually use your paintbrush this is when the paintbrush comes in handy your, your dry paintbrush and just come in you can just tidy up the ends like that and just smooth over the surface that blends it all in so that works well another little tip when you're doing this sort of job um, always keep an old towel as you can see I've got an old towel here it's covered in paint it's covered in loads of rubbish but this is my cleaning up towel which I clean my paintbrushes on I clean my hands on and it's an old towel that uh, doesn't matter if it gets a bit war torn and dirty because it's my work towel if you like. So give yourself an old towel handy so you can wipe your hands because you, your hands will get covered as you can see. A little bit there in this plaster material. Like I say it does come off, it's, it's not harmful. Rinse it under cold water it comes off. So there we go. So what I'll do now, as promised, I'm going to go have a cup of tea while this is drying. I'll give this, personally, I'll give this a good couple of hours to dry. Give it about at least three hours, I would say. Don't have to, but I like to give it maximum drying time. Just come along now and again, have a little touch with your finger. You'll know when it's dry because it will be rock hard and also it will be 
dry to the touch, it won't be damp or wet. And once that stage is completed, then you come along and you can paint it, you can add your glue to it, like I said, and whatever you want to do with it. So I'll do the next stage of this when it's all finished, and you can see what happens next. Stay tuned. Righto, people, let's get going. So we've got my paintbrush handy, got my glue ready. So what we'll do is exactly, you can do exactly what I'm going to show you to do at home. The whole point of watching this video is so that you can have a go at home with doing the same thing, whether on a smaller scale or a larger scale. The same principle works in any, any gauge, any size layout, so have some fun. So what we do is just bang a little bit of that on there like that. Don't be frightened or afraid of this stuff, get it on. That's all you've got to do. Come in with your paintbrush, start painting the PVA with your paintbrush. Get it in all the little nooks and crannies because don't forget all this is going to be covered with scenic material. That's the idea of it. All right, don't be frightened of it. It won't hurt you. And the more you get on there, the better finish you will get. You can always come back and do the bottom part afterwards, but get the main area covered with all this on there, as you can see. You can apply it with a brush separately or just do what I'm doing, drizzling it on there at the container. Just go for it, don't be frightened of it. Have some fun. Alright, we'll start with that amount. Put that over there like that. And just come in with a brush and just start painting. When I say painting, you just do the same brush strokes what you do when normally you paint with paint, but you're using glue. And just the basic idea is you're getting it on to all the places you want it to go and you can get it exactly where you want it. Like that. Then come along with your paintbrush and run it along the edge. Like that. Now don't worry about it because this stuff does dry clear so if you do get it on anything you can either wipe it off with a cloth and it will take care of itself but we've got it on there as you can see nice bit of coverage like I said you can't go wrong with this stuff so it's, it is good the good quality PVA is essential when you're doing things like this don't go for the cheap stuff that's very watery or very cheap and you know because there is some very cheap glue out there on the market and it's not very good it's worth going to a builder's merchant or a proper hardware store and getting some decent PVA um, you can use deluxe bond which is specifically for the model railway um, the mainly designed for car kits and stuff like that you could buy it on Hattons or you could buy it on most ra model railway shops um, great stuff but it's really really expensive and you only get a very tiny amount. This you can get loads of it and it will come in handy for future projects. So buy in bulk, save for later on, that's my principle. <laughs> I do that. Do you know when you even want to go to the supermarket I I do things like that. If something's on special offer and I, I know I'm going to use a lot of it but you get a lot of it for your money, I'll buy it in bulk because I know that I might come in handy and it will, it will come in handy for later on, you know what I mean? That's just me anyway, so not everyone's like me. Right, I think we're ready to apply our grass. So just make sure, yeah, that's all on there, lovely. You don't have to go too mad with it, but I mean, get it on there. Right, where's our scenic material? Let's go and dig it out. Where is it? Aha, it's underneath the layout. Right, here it is. I'll just turn my fan off because otherwise it might get a little bit silly. In actual fact, let me stop this a minute because I'm going to go and get a cloth and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do next. Right, right. just back from downstairs. I've got myself a couple of these baby wipes and then you can just go around the bottom a bit of a tidy up. The PVA is still wet, so don't worry about that. That'll be fine. But we're just going to do a little bit of a tidy up here.
Yeah, just a little bit of a tidy up. Not going to be perfect, but I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it gets the idea of just making sure we don't want any glue where it shouldn't be. While the glue's still wet. Right, now we can put our sprinkle material on. I'm using a mixture of um, Woodland Scenic Blended Turf with uh, coarse green turf, which I've made my own mix up in this container and it comes out via the little sieve applicator and just chuck it on there. Some people use a tea strainer or a sieve, whatever works for you. I use these handy containers it comes in, it does the job. So you just get it all on there. You can always go back over it on the second run. Get on, get the first layer on there first. Don't focus on one spot. Just keep it moving, left to right. Get it on there. You can squeeze it. You can tap it. You can do anything you want with it. You can shake it. If you keep it moving like that very fast and you get an even coverage, so to speak, let's come back over the other side. If my elbow gets in a shot, I do apologise. It's a little bit cramped up here, but I'll do my best. Okay, as you can see there's a bit left on my hand so what I'm going to do is just pop it back in the container. Um, what I've actually got, I've got one of those vacuum cleaners that I've had for a very, very long time. The, the belt on it which rotates the brush that goes on the floor doesn't work. But the actual suction power on the cylinder is removable and the vacuum cleaner still works. So I use a, an old vacuum cleaner to suck up the old excess bits of grass and then you can actually reuse it and put it back in the container. Obviously remember to make sure that the cylinder's nice and clean before you do that, otherwise you don't want bits of fluff and carpet here and all sorts mixed in with this. <laughs> Bit of common sense, but you know, it happens. Like I said, remember Sod's Law. So all we're going to do now really, this is how, again, I do things. I mean, you don't have to do exactly what, what, what I'm doing here. But this is just to show you how I do things. And what I do now, I come in with a smaller brush, which is a dry brush this size or less or whatever, and just start tidying up. Sweep it up towards the where you just glued. Come in, have a little tidy up. Sweeping it towards where you've just glued. Sweep it back onto itself. Like that. Right, all we're going to do now is just wait for this to dry 24 hours, that's how I would do it, before I add any more lichen or scenic material on top of that, that will need at least a good day or so to dry, so I'll do, I'll stop the video now for the time being, and I'll say thank you very much for watching today, hope that's been very useful for you, or certainly helpful in what you're doing at home, like I said, my videos are marketed and named at everybody, um, but mainly, I like to think I'm helping the younger generation out there because it is hard if, when you're a young person and you're getting involved in the hobby and you're not sure about ideas and tips and you read magazines and books and go to model railway shows and think, wow, I wish I had something like that. And you think, how do I do it? Well, I try to do things as easy as possible to say, this is a simple idea that you can do at home 
and you can enjoy getting involved in and hopefully I've achieved something today with you in what I've done. Anyway, have a great day, take care, enjoy your projects and if you can, have a go yourself and film on your layout what you've done so I'd love to see, so we can strange your ideas and certainly see how you've got on. Anyway, have a great day, as you can see it's a beautiful sunny day, I'll just pan the camera up outside my wando can't see it very well but it's no you can't see it but it's, believe it or not it's actually quite sunny outside it's very very nice today very hot so I've got a fan in my model railway room so it keeps things cool obviously um, just ready to get a later dry now anyway that's enough from me see you soon and hopefully when I see you in the next video we'll add some different bits and pieces to it and finish it off and uh, you can do the same on your one hopefully. Anyway, have a great day. Happy modelling. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.